Hello, I am Camilo Paez from the editorial board of the Build Up Portal, which is the European platform for energy efficiency in buildings. Welcome to this edition of our series of expert talks. We are hosting today with Dr. Dirigu Erten, that is um, an international recognized expert and senior sustainability executive. Welcome, Dirigu. We are very glad to do this interview with you today. Thank you, Camilo. It's a pleasure. Today, we want to address the subject of uh, nearly zero energy buildings and how the new constructions are nowadays allowing to reach this level of performance. What are the challenges and perspectives of the building sector? For discussing around these questions, we reach to have the insider feedback from our interviewee today, Dr. Duigu Erten, whose practice and research interests are sustainability in the built environment, specifically green building certification systems, circular economy, and also green finance. To mention some credentials, Dr. Erten is a civil engineer from Bokasishi University in Istanbul and received her master's and PhD degrees from Rutgers University in the USA in civil and environmental engineering in 94. She later completed the executive program at Harvard University School of Public Health on Leadership in Sustainability. In practice, she worked as the director of Clinton Climate Initiative, the implementing partner of C40 for the Clinton Foundation in Istanbul. She has been elected to serve on US Green Building Council Board from 2014 to 2017. She is the co-founder of the Turkey Green Building Council and served as the president and vice president from 2007 to 2016. Besides these experiences, she's got several recognitions. She received the president's award given by the World Green Building Council for her outstanding contributions to the global sustainability movement in 2012. She has been awarded Green Fellow recognition by the British Research Establishment in 2016, and she received the Women in Sustainability Leadership Award in 2017 from the US Green Building Council. Finally, she has been teaching sustainability related courses at several universities, and she is a board member of Turkeco Construction and Energy Incorporated, an SME she started in 2009. According to your experience, are there are green building certification systems contributing to the production of highly energy efficient constructions today? And uh, will you how you, will you evaluate the impact of certifications applied to date in the production of NSEP constructions? Camilo, in order to answer this, we have to look to the history of green building certification systems. As we both know, they originated in the beginning of 1990s. And the UK-based BRAM and the US-based LEED paved the way for sustainability in the built environment. In addition to energy use, they have other criteria like health, material use, transportation, ecology, uh, and many others. So they're different than energy certifications. These criteria help your uh, energy efficient building create livable, comfortable, and healthy buildings. So it's not all about energy efficiency when it comes to green building certification systems. But now there is a need for clarity, specifically for uh, energy use described in these systems. There is uh, a need for clear and measurable goal. Everyone working with the new building certification systems should start thinking and should be able to really plan for in use stage and, um, uh, and, and not only measuring the building performance, but also how the building is used. Uh, the answer to your question depends on the green rating of the uh, building. Because if it's a lead silver building or a brand good building, uh, I'm not comfortably say, yes, they are very energy efficient buildings. Because as you know, there are many, many parameters affecting. And as the building gets higher green building rating, there's a high possibility to, to be a, a more energy efficient building than having lower uh, rated green building systems. 
as we all know, living up to the Paris Agreement means European climate neutrality by 2050. And energy use and actual consumption of buildings will be an important theme uh, for the coming years. And this will have an impact on certification systems too. They have been working very hard upgrading their current versions. Both Bram and LEED have been doing much better uh, for their energy uh, credits compared to 10 years ago. Uh, the most famous green building certification systems are LEED and Bram when it comes to associating with NISA uh, because uh, we are expecting a proliferation of new rating systems, including sites, arc, well. We are, um, we are thinking in the coming years, there's going to be a diversification of performance-based green building certification programs. But let's uh, first go over what needs to be done to achieve NISAP, because it's a, this is a confusing period right now for many countries. A combination of many criteria are likely needed to achieve uh, improvements for NISAP. What are those? Like building insulation levels greatly improved, uh, glazing ratios may need to be considered, uh, insulation value of the glazing itself uh, will be considerably uh, improved, uh, air tightness standards are being introduced including mandatory air tightness tests on every building, uh, enhanced calculation of linear thermal bridging required, the use of renewables and free cooling up to 20% of final demand, the use of solar shading will need to be considered, uh, renewables will need to cover a substantial part, part of energy use, and much more efficient lighting and services will be needed. When we think about all these criteria NISAP is requiring, they are already embedded in the criteria of green building rating systems. Uh, so uh, as green building uh, certification uh, institutions push for higher versions, they are making the systems closer and closer to NISAP. So higher standards, per, more percentages, higher percentages over uh, baselines, they're getting better and better. The International Living Building Challenge Institute had a certification, uh, you know, ILFI, and it is also an option for a net zero, it gives an option for a net zero energy building uh, under its umbrella of the, uh, uh, you know, holistic um, LBC certification that everyone started talking recently. Such buildings have 100% of their energy needs supplied by on-site renewable energy on an uh, annual basis. The NISAP designation varies that a building is truly uh, operating as claimed, harnessing energy from the sun, wind, uh, or earth to exceed net annual energy demand. To earn the certification, a building must actually meet five requirements of the LBC. And these are limits of growth, net zero energy, rights to nature, beauty and spirit, and inspiration and education. According to ILFI website, any building can become NISAP certified, new or operational, anywhere in the world. 100% of the project energy needs must be supplied by on-site renewable energy uh, on a net annual basis without the use of on-site combustion. NISAP certified buildings must also meet the following uh, requirements of living building challenge. The first half of Imperator 1, limits to growth, dealing with appropriate siting of buildings imperative 19, beauty and spirit imperative 20, and inspiring and education. So uh, I think we are in a good shape uh, for using these certification systems now to pave the way for NISAP. Well, I would like to, to share um, about the Turkish context. Uh, about in particular to NSEP um, definition, we know that there are not a, there is not a single uh, consensual definition for what our uh, NSEP is. And uh, we would like to know what is being um, defined in Turkey uh, as, a, as a reference for this. And in a broader sense, also how the energy uh, performance of buildings is being regulated in, in Turkey. Well, uh, definition of NISAP 
vary, but they all share a common, common goal, as we know, to reduce or neutralize the environmental impact of buildings. Therefore, we should keep in mind that there is no single definition of NIZEP, but there are several different definitions and frameworks depending on climatic, economic, and political conditions of that country. Member states have flexibility in how they define NIZEP uh, in their countries, so the requirements vary across the EU. Turkey, of course, uh, Turkish officials have been working on NIZEP uh, since few years, and they are developing related national policy since 2007 uh, in order to meet EPBD requirements and currently carry on studies related to near zero energy buildings. Turkey is developing its own NIZEP standards by the help of GIZ based on my conversation with Turkish Ministry of Environment and Settlements. The minimum standards are strengthened regularly and progressively, allowing and encouraging building owners and investors to plan ahead. Turkey has been doing very well when it comes to energy efficiency policies. Uh, one thing, Turkey's building energy regulation focuses on thermal resistance. The national standard of thermal insulation requirements for buildings, TS 825, was first issued in 1999 and became mandatory since 2000. Uh, this standard has been revised many, many times and subsequently latest version of which was published in uh, 2013 uh, has been revised uh, again and it regulates the envelope thermal insulation. It sets minimum U values for envelope components. In addition, more recently, Turkey has begun to align with the European legislation on buildings, including the Energy Performance Buildings Directive, EPDP. Uh, a part of this process is adoption of building energy performance, BEP, regulation, which envisions the use of district heating and or renewable energy for the buildings above a certain threshold. So uh, I think in three to four months, Turkey will have its NISAP standard. Also, uh, all regulations consistently refer to efficient heating systems, indicating that Efficient heating is a major issue in energy efficiency in buildings. Uh, the only piece of regulation where efficient heating is not explicitly mentioned is the green building regulation, which came out a few years ago. To come back to the definition of nearly zero energy buildings, you as an awarded sustainability expert, do you think that the NSEP definitions uh, that are currently used need to be connected to other sustainability indicators? Well, the definition of NISEP emerged strongly in recent years as a new concept for sustainable and energy neutral development in the built environment, as you know. The importance of this concept lies in its capacity to solve part of our current environmental crisis by replacing fossil fuels with renewable energy through a decentralized approach. The Energy Performance of Buildings Directive, EP, EPBD, 2010, uh, introduced the definition of NISAP as building with very high energy performance where uh, uh, the nearly zero or very low amount of energy required should be uh, extensively covered by renewable sources produced on site or nearby. The founding principles for any NISAP definition are based on uh, setting a proper balance between energy efficiency, renewable energy generation, human comfort, and carbon emissions. Operation and maintenance of high-performance buildings uh, are a basic component of NISAP. A robust performance of NISAP without facility management is impossible. Uh, and NISAP definitions need to look at a range of criteria, including materials rather than energy only, and corresponding policy measures should evolve to address smart buildings and smart cities also. The definition development should be a consensus base on the national level. Definitions should also include measurement and verification, so those definitions translate into consistent codes while being coupled to training for builders, designers, and workers. You touch there are several key ingredients to, to achieving a coherent development of this. 
I, I would like to, to address this um, current situation. Um, from your point of view, do you, do you think the current uh, COVID uh, sanitary and economic crisis we are living has highlighted um, the need to make a stronger emphasis on sustainability? And uh, is the, develop the sustainable development enough? Or is this uh, construction and building sector needing broader concepts such as uh, restorative and uh, regenerative development? Well, of course, the sustainability is no longer considered with resources and energy only, like it used to be. Now it's more human centric compared to 20 years ago. That's why we have certifications like well, fit well, etc. But we no longer have to luxury of just being less bad. Remember the philosophy behind these certification systems? That's why a fundamental shift is occurring now uh, from the old guard of sustainability to the new one of regenerative design. Whereas a sustainable development attempts to meet the needs of the present without compromising the needs of future generations, uh, regenerative development seeks to regenerate the environment and the people who live within its ecosystem. Sustainability is the balance point where we give back as much as we take, but we can do better than that. Nowadays, we came to the realization that sustainability is in, in limiting impact. And we have strategies, approaches, and tools that seek to go one step, one step further and to restore our social and ecosystems to a healthy state. And we have emerging strategies, approaches, and tools that will allow these healthy systems uh, to flourish and evolve. It's obvious that uh, sustainability is not enough today because we are observing even the language of sustainability is shifting. Uh, only a few months ago, uh, terms such as doing more good, uh, net positive, uh, restorative sustainability were on the fringe of built environment sustainability thinking. Today, they are more mainstream within the business uh, sustainability agendas. And let's not forget, NISEP is the way to go uh, since NISEPs have zero dependency on fossil fuels and up to now whatever we did uh, including green building certification systems we weren't successful enough to get rid of fossil fuel usage uh, from our buildings thank you for recalling this point uh, and thank you for all your insights Hugo. i hope to see you soon and thank uh, thanks also the audience for watching see thanks. you in uh, next edition